I'm Ted Kaufman, Chairman of the Congressional Oversight Panel. I'm here to introduce our October report, Examining Treasury's Use of Financial Crisis Contracting Authority. The Trouble Asset Relief Program is a public program in design and purpose, created by Congress, paid for by taxpayers, and intended to stabilize the American economy. Yet private companies today perform many of the TARP's most critical functions, operating with 96 contracts worth up to $434 million. Contracting by its very nature raises concerns about accountability, concerns that aren't unique to the TARP. Now imagine that you're remodeling your house and you need to knock down a wall, reroute some pipes, and repaint a few rooms. If you do the job yourself, you can be certain that it's done to your liking. But you may have to buy specialized equipment, undergo months of training, and spend weeks on the job itself. You could save a lot of money, time, and effort by hiring someone else. But you'll face the risk that a contractor might cut corners by using cheap supplies and shoddy workmanship. Similarly, when Treasury hires a private company to manage the TARP, it invites many concerns that simply wouldn't exist otherwise. Private businesses may have conflict of interest, are not directly responsible to the public, and are not subject to the same disclosure requirements as government actors. They don't take an oath of office, nor do they stand for election. Sometimes hiring a private contractor is nonetheless the best and cheapest approach, but in those cases, Treasury must conduct scrupulous oversight, just as you would watch very closely someone you hired to model your home. In general, Treasury deserves credit for taking significant steps to use private contractors appropriately. Some experts have even praised Treasury for going above and beyond the usual standards for government contracting. For example, Although Treasury had tremendous authority to bypass the usual contracting process, it stuck to the rules. It provided competitive bidding for most contracts, and it established layers of controls to monitor performance and to prevent conflicts of interest. But we must view this praise in context. The government contracting process is notoriously opaque. Treasury may have done well by government standards, but significant transparency concerns remain. For example, Contractors are immune to requests under the Freedom of Information Act. They may hire subcontractors, and those subcontracts are not disclosed to the public. Details of a contractor's work may be buried in work orders that are never published in any form. Further, Treasury publishes no meaningful performance information during the life of the contract. In short, as work moves farther and farther from Treasury's direct control, it receives farther and farther into a fog that obscures accountability. Contracting has also created confusion about the role of small businesses in administering the TARP. In one case, Treasury reported awarding a contract to a small disadvantaged business, which in turn gave 80% of the work to a large business. Even though it appears to the public that a small business is doing the job, the truth is that a large business is responsible for the work. Treasury gave the very largest TARP contracts to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the giant mortgage and guarantors, for work related to the foreclosure mitigation program. Those agreements raise significant concerns. Both Fannie and Freddie have a history of profound corporate mismanagement. Both companies would have collapsed in 2008 were not for government bailouts. Further, both companies have fallen short in aspects of their performance, making errors and missing deadlines. The panel examines these concerns in a detail in a case study accompanying our full report. Other tar large TARP contracts have gone to law firms, investment management firms, and audit firms. The nature of these companies' relationships to the financial system inevitably gives rise to potential conflicts of interest. Contractors might behave in the interest of their other clients rather than of the taxpayers, or they might use their access to sensitive market information to turn a quick profit. Treasury takes these risks seriously and performs regular reviews to uncover and mitigate conflicts, but it relies primarily on contractors to disclose their own potential conflicts. Treasury can and should provide better, 
more independent oversight. Our concerns about contracting are of a particular significance given the scale of private companies' involvement in the TARP. Fannie Mae alone now has 600 people working on its TARP contract. By comparison, Treasury has only 220 staffers working on all TARP programs combined. In other words, the vast majority of people working on the TARP today receive their paychecks from private companies, not the federal government. Treasury deserves credit for its efforts to improve contracting, but given the extensive involvement of private actors in this critical public program, further improvements can and should be made. You can read our full report and offer your own views by visiting our website, cop.senate.gov.